Let the peace of Christ rule in your heart, since as members of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. All right. And here in verses 15 through 17, Paul says that each and every one of us is to make sure that our hearts, desires, passions, and feelings are ruled by peace. He uses that word heart again. Because of Jesus, because of what Jesus has done for us, because of who we are in Christ, because of the difference and the change Jesus is making in my life, I should have contentment, peace, and satisfaction. And so should you. And if you and I have the peace, then there will be contentment, peace, and satisfaction throughout the church. You see what Paul is saying here? He is saying that people who know this peace and are ruled by this peace make for a peaceful church. But people who don't know this peace, or people who aren't ruled by this peace, make for church conflict. So that's why Paul goes on here, and he talks about teaching and admonishing one another. Right? So, so teaching one another. Um, who are you responsible for instructing? Huh? Whoever you're with, okay. One another, right? And, and how do we do that? What are just some of the different ways we do that? Okay, we can do it in our lifestyle. Loving, in a loving way. Okay. Okay, what do you mean by that? Be a little more specific. Okay. Okay. Through the word, counseling one another, maybe? Giving advice? Okay, hey, I know what you're going through. You know what the Word of God says about that? Let's look at this together, maybe. Sharing a verse, writing a note. Okay, the next word he says is rebuking. What does that mean? And how do we do that? <laughs> Carefully. What, is it, what does it mean to rebuke? Pardon what? To correct. To correct. So how do we correct one another? One on one, preferably. Yes. Without being accusatory. Through the word. I do. I do a lot of it through text. Okay. I'm still in. I'm still in connection with some people who were in the church in Illinois, church in Michigan, uh, texting people all over. Uh, there's a, a young man. Young man just kind of going through some things, and and he had he had asked me and another person pray that I keep God number one in all things, and I knew that he was in kind of a, a difficult situation, kind of a, uh, a hard spot, and so I just texted him and said, "Hey, I want you to know I'm still praying for you to keep God first in all things," because it would have been a, a circumstance where he might have lost sight of that. Okay? So it's just don't don't get off the don't get off the right path. Don't get off the right path. Okay, now he says something very interesting here. All right? He says that we are to teach and admonish one another with all wisdom. Okay, that's the application of God's truth. With all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. So that seems to say that one of the ways we are able to teach one another and correct one another is with our congregational singing. That tells us that the songs must be chosen carefully, he says, with wisdom, because 
teaching and correction happens through the music ministry of the church. And the songs we sing, we sing because sometimes they encourage, sometimes they comfort, but they also teach and they also correct. And they can heal. Well then, verse 17 here, he says, And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. That seems to be kind of a summary of these thoughts. In whatever you do, and whatever you say, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, which is a parallel thought to your life is now hidden in Christ. We have to realize that everything we do and everything we say needs to be representative of Jesus. 